A pleasant good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to our global internet audience. We welcome you back tonight once again to Light and Life's Masterclass. Yes, it is Wednesday night and we are already here in the house of the Lord in one accord. Something good, something awesome is about to happen. I thank God for today, for this is the day that the Lord has made. And yes, we will rejoice and be glad in it. I honor our father, our apostle, teacher, counselor, you know, we have many names for him. Apostle John C. Taylor, I lift him up before you tonight. I honor him. First Lady Lorna Taylor and the First Family, Light and Life Ministries leaders, God's elect ministries, wherever you are tonight, I honor you. I welcome you to this broadcast. My name again is Minister Althea Aldermeyer. For those of you who don't know me, along working alongside our beautiful Minister Kishana, give them a wave for me, please, and Minister Lisa. Now, tonight, it's, it's a jam-packed night, and I don't want to stay long before you, because guess what? It's the month of April, the month of the April showers and the April babies. And we want to take some time tonight just to celebrate them. Um, YouTube audience, uh, those watching Facebook, if you're born in, in the month of April, just send up some love, send up some fire in the chat. You know, we celebrate Brother Donald, who was the first um, uh, minister, JR, Pastor Fiona's son, uh, and otherwise known as AKA Granny Rapper. We celebrate her. They were the second. And today, our own Minister Anna Mika's birthday. So let's just give them some love. Give them a call. Don't just send a text. I love it when people call me, you know, on that special day. Don't just send a text. You know, have a conversation. It's that time to reach out and touch someone. We all need somebody. We all need each other to survive. Light and Life has been moving, man of God. Oh, we're celebrating on one more person, but I'm leaving that to our bishop. He knows who it is because we got to celebrate with those that celebrate. Amen. And those testimonies are coming. It doesn't matter what they are, how small they are. They're coming. Our apostle preached last time on break out and break free. Assistance is provided. And as we're breaking out and breaking free, we need to testify. And when people testify, let's just celebrate them in the season. Those who are watching from England, St. Vincent, Jamaica, all over the globe, we bless you tonight. We, we honor you and we thank you for having us. Having We thank you for being with us in the house of the Lord. It is always a pleasure to be in the presence of the Lord. Oh my gosh, I was going to put it on pink tonight and it my bishop come out with pink. It's a good thing. I mixed it up. <laughs> oh gosh, that pink is the hot pink and we love it. Family, let's celebrate the April babies. And I'm asking us tonight, please, you know, stay with us until the end. There are quite a few announcements that need to go out. Um, but for the sake of time, we will be doing those announcements end and I just appreciate you and I thank you just for sticking it out with us tonight I know the man of God is coming with a word and we're not here to you know put our insecurities over on God you know I love what he said the last time don't let your experience block you tonight I'm asking us to not let that experience that we had block us from receiving what the man of God is about to bring for tonight I just want to release him tonight in the atmosphere. I pray that our hearts and our minds are in tune. I pray that we're connected tonight with what the man of God, the Holy Spirit has given the man of God for us tonight. As he is serving us the word tonight, I pray that, you know, the Holy Spirit will do something new in us. Family, YouTube audience, Zoom audience, please open your mics. YouTube audience, do what you do in the chat. Remember to invite someone. Subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed because God needs you to evangelize in this season. Apostle John C. Taylor, it is with privilege and honor that I welcome you tonight. Please take the stage. Family, let's welcome Good him. Evening, Bishop. Good evening, Bishop. Lovely. Good evening, Father. Welcome, Dr. Bishop. Good evening, Bishop. We love you. We love you, Bishop. One of the best. Yes. One of the best bishops. You, you guys so so excited. <laughs> Despite love you, Bishop. Oh, my God. It's so beautiful. To the moon, I love you. <laughs> love you right now, Chris. <laughs> I, I got to take this one in. Beautiful. I love you guys. <laughs> so, wow. It's like we have a scene 
on another for a while. <laughs> but so good to be back and here again. Good to be back. You're allowing me to be in your space another time. We decree and declare that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Amen. It's a choice. Yeah, it's a choice. Yeah, we will <laughs> rejoice. Some people choose to be sad. Amen. We choose to be sad, but we will rejoice and be glad in it. I want, I want this mic because sometimes the other one, um, it's okay. Let it stay here. Hallelujah. All right. We will get, I'll just, yeah, I'm looking at different screens at the same time because I like to stay uh, uh, interactive with my audience. So if you see me look away, sometimes I'm, 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 I'm trying to see every now and again, I take a glimpse of who is in the chat and uh, as we communicate with one another this evening, I would just pray that it would be a blessing. All right, so the, the announcement that Minister Althea was kind of leaving for me is that <laughs> after 10 tries, after 10 tries, Nadia Taylor's finally <laughs> got her license. I think you should open your eyes. Congratulations, Congratulations, Nadia. Glory to the Lord. 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 Glory name of Jesus. Oh. Uh, it, 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 yeah. shows her, it shows her stick to itiveness. Yeah, mm -hmm. she, she, she never mm -hmm. gave up. Uh, some people would have quit a long time ago, but Nadia mm -hmm. hung on in there yeah. and she said, I'm going to get my license. Yeah. And she got her license. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, <laughs> Tisha, <laughs> welcome in the chat. Say hi to you. Wonderful husband, Richard, for me, uh, 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 Prophet Peter and your wife watching up there. We love you guys. We love you. Jada, did I see Jada in church on Sunday? I yeah, but I didn't get a hug from the, uh, Jada, so she that's was, the reason why. She <laughs> okay. All right. I love you, Jada. All right. God bless you. Uh, just, just a little brief announcement. Our brother John he is a pastor. You know that um, he is well versed in a lot of things. Sunday I will be announcing that he does immigration. He does whatever, whatever you need. If you need resume stuff like that, you can see our brother John. But I will just introduce him again to the brethren to let you know what he do and that if you need help. Is someone that you can turn to. You can turn to. All right. God is good. We have all the resources. Happy birthday, Mika. You're my daughter. Love you. And all, uh, Brother Donald was on the first. We celebrate you, Brother Donald, and all the other folks who are celebrating birthdays. We just give you, give God thanks for each and every one of you. You guys look so splendid for us out there. I just give God thanks to you. Grab your Bibles. Can we get to work this evening? Dr. Milton, it's good to see you, sir. Francine, welcome online. Praise God. Minister Carter, you're there. Love you. Carlene, Bryce, God bless you. And all of you that are giving Nadia congratulations. At <laughs> I think it's 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 in order. <laughs> Congratulations is in order. Viola Stroh, love your girl. Tell the great one I love him. God is good. It's the Janet. God bless you, Jennifer. Good to see you. Be strong in the Lord. Okay. Be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. To those of you that are watching from the islands. The island of Jamaica, Barbados, Guyana, St. Vincent, you name them. You name them over there across the pond in England, in America, Australia, the Philippines. We, we give God thanks for you. As you're coming on on the various platforms, we thank God. Matthew 3.16, St. Matthew chapter 3.16. Minister Lisa, you look lovely as usual. Man, I can't wait for you to get that husband for him to sit beside you. 
the two of you hosting. Amen. Lisa is stepping up to preaching now. Everybody listen to what I'm saying. Lisa is, is, is ready to preach. Mm -hmm. Give God thanks. Right? If you notice now, Lisa is doing more preaching than even. <laughs> you got to understand. Uh, I remember I remember it was, uh, what is it called? King Stitchy? It was a Stitchy? Or, 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 yeah. Stitchy, when he when he was trans, uh, uh, God was um, transforming him from singing into preaching. This guy would come to sing and he would just talk, 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 talk. He, he would just talk, talk. He came to sing, and I said, "Okay, he is he's moving over. Yeah, he's moving over." When a word starts coming into your mouth, you must understand the change. You guys have to be able to watch the change transition. People start to transform. Amen. They're moving out of conformity. And they start to transform. First place you need to transform is in your mind. You got to first accept what God says about you. You got to accept what God is doing in your life. There are too many people that God wants to use, but they are pushing back. Amen. No need to push back, friends. Amen. The gift and the calling is what are without repentance. Praise God. And, and, and I mean, we need a pointer need somebody to point you. Too many people step out without being pointed so they don't know where they're going. They call themselves a name that nobody says you are. <laughs> you understand? Amen. You got to be told. You got to be told. Before you was in your mother's belly, I made you a prophet. Somebody have to tell you. Come on now. Ever since, ever since uh, Aaron, uh, priest have to be laid hands on. You need to be prayed over. There's some people that start in church, nobody pray over them. Nobody anoint them. Nobody confirm them. Nobody affirm them. Matthew 3, 16, when he had been baptized, that is Jesus, came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God <clears throat> descending like a dove and lighting up on him and sitting up on him. I'm going to read a few scriptures tonight, so please bear with me. Please bear with me. I'm asking your church, please bear with me. Acts chapter 10, 38. Acts chapter 10, 38. The Bible said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. For God was with him, Acts 10, 38, King James Version I just read. Using for a subject uh, for this masterclass, my subject is entitled, Howard by the Holy Ghost. Howard by the Holy Ghost. And for my subtopic is, build an altar. Build an altar. Father, thank you tonight for the anointing of the Spirit of God, without whom I cannot function, I cannot do what you've called me to do. He's my engine. He's the wind beneath my wings. He's the one that directs my part. And I thank you tonight, Lord, that the words that you have placed inside of my spirit, you will cause them to flow freely as I give my tongue to you. Use my tongue as a pen of a ready writer. I thank you in Jesus' name. There are two major factors. I, I, I can also say main reason are dynamics for effective ministry. Number one, <clears throat> number one is you being empowered by the Holy Ghost. Number one is to be what? Empowered by the Holy Spirit. And number two is you having a prayer life our prayer altar. Since I'm dealing with an altar tonight, amen, for you to have a personal altar. Hallelujah. These are two of the main forces at work in any extraordinary man or woman, woman of God, lives that you see. They have, they have been empowered. They have been powered by the Holy Spirit and they have a prior life. They have a what? 
prayer life, an altar. They had an altar, right? <clears throat> One of the main functions of the Holy Spirit is to help us to pray. One of the main functions of the Holy Spirit, I'm taking my time so you can take notes. One of the main functions, there are many functions, but one of the main ones is to help you to pray. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, 26, likewise also, the Spirit, likewise the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Romans 8, 26, NKJV. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through verses number 4. Remember, you need a prayer life. You need an altar. You need an altar to be effective. You need an altar. To be effective, you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Let me put it that way. The Bible says, and the, uh, Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound. Please take note. A sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. We're talking about the Holy Ghost there. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled, uh-huh, here it is, with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them what? Utterance. Praise God. Hallelujah. I will come back to that. Brothers and sisters, silence. Silence has no motion. What did I just say? Silence has no motion. Silence speaks of stillness. Silence speaks of quietness. Silence speaks of calm and tranquility, to name a few. But on the other hand, when we talk about sound, hallelujah. Number one, let me give you a few uh, 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 details here. Number one, sound travels. Sound what? Travels. Mm -hmm. Number two, sound gives effects. There's sound effect. <laughs> you know sound effects? Praise God. Number three, sound is all encompassing. I mean, it's on all sides around you. Sound is wide ranging. And number five, sound is thorough. Means it, 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 no, well, I, I gave four. Sound is wide ranging. That's four. And number five, sound is thorough. Meaning it's myth, methodical. Amen. Wide ranging speaks of methodical or in depth, right? Just to name a few. That's what sound is. Uh, 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 silence of no motion. When something is silent, it's still. You ever see the sea, uh, gone to the, the ocean? And when the ocean is, 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 is calm, it's still. It's just still. But when there is a wind and a wave, remember, I'm dealing with Acts 2 here. There was a sound as a rushing mighty wind, and it stirs up. The wave, there was a noise, there was a sound. Sound travels. Sound travels. Hallelujah. The power of sound. The Bible says because the sound travels, there were people that was in Jerusalem at the, the time of Pentecost that, that heard the sound. Because why? Sound travels. When you're silent, nobody is listening. Nobody hears you because you are silent. But when you make some noise, it gives off effects. 
Hallelujah. Come on now. It's encompassing. Think about it. Our sister Twyla, we pray for her. Her apartment just got uh, gutted by fire. So right now, she, the only clothes she has is what she had on her back. All of her uh, uh, belongings were destroyed in a fire last evening. We pray for Sister Toyla. She lost her dog, but you know what I mean? She's alive, her pet dead. And you know, pet to some people, pets to some people are, are just like their kids. You, you see, just like the, that's a best friend. So I'm asking you to please, brothers and sisters, remember Sister Toyla, all right? All right, so I'm talking about sound here. Don't, this, this is part one of Powered by the Holy Ghost. Here it is, all right? So I'm not rushing. I want you to get this and get it good, right? <laughs> because of the sound that came at the day of Pentecost, there were people from all over the world worshiping at Jerusalem at that day. And the Bible says the sound travels. And they came to where the, the 120 uh, disciples were, and they were amazed because why they heard uh, th these people spoke in their maiden languages and they were not from their countries. Uh, you, you get what I'm saying? The sound travels. What God is saying to us, even in Light and Life Ministries, come on now, close mouths, don't get fed. You hear what I'm saying? You come to church and you're still, come on now, that ain't bringing God no glory. Praise God Almighty. Uh, 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 silence is stillness. Silence is calm. Silence is tranquility. We do not go into the presence of the Lord to be tranquil. We go there to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with Praise. Hallelujah. The Lord inhabits. He lives in the praises of his people. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm, I just here to give God praise tonight because somebody's about to get excited. Hallelujah. Come on, some dry bones are going to get up and because they're going to be a, a rattling. They're going to be a rattling. Something is happening and, uh, among the mulberry bushes tonight. There is a noise in the name of Jesus. Jesus is asking his church to start to make some noise. All of a sudden, the church gone silent. All of a sudden, the church gone still. Blessed quietness holy quietness. What assurance in Come on, church. It's time for us to start making some noise because people are listening to hear a noise. People are, people are drawn to sound. People can't help it when they hear, when you're driving on the road. And that uh, paramedics or, or police officers turn on their sirens. Hallelujah. No matter what, it caught your attention, don't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's the same way. If we begin to make a sound hallelujah toronto where we are living need to hear a sound as it's about time for a sound to start coming from the house of god hallelujah come on somebody here i said the church need to rise up and begin to make a sound too many people are too stush nowadays they don't even want to say praise the lord they don't even want to say hallelujah. We don't even want to give God the highest praise. What's wrong with God's people? Hallelujah. At the, the, the church began with a noise. The church began with a bang. Mm -hmm. There was a sound. Oh, God Almighty. There was a what? Sound. Where has the sound gone? Where has the sound gone? Where? 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 Let, 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 let me not ask it that way. Where has your sound? I said, your sound. Where's your sound gone? Yeah, you're making a sound, but it's all bad words. Yeah, you're cussing like a junkie sailor. Mm -hmm. You're making sound, of course, but it's nothing pleasing to God. But we are here to make a joyful noise. <laughs> it may be noise to other people. Hallelujah. But it brings joy to the ears of the Lord. It is sweet sound. Let my praise be a sweet sound 
in your ears, oh God, oh Spirit of God tonight. Oh God, take back your people to the altar. Lord God, your people need an altar. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, you cannot have the infilling. Listen to what I'm saying carefully here. You cannot have the infilling of the Holy Spirit without corresponding sound or corresponding action. I am not talking about being saved. Everybody is saved by the Spirit, but not everyone is filled are full of the Holy Ghost. You cannot say that again. Everyone is saved by the Spirit of God. But there, is a, there, is, there are other levels. Mm, okay. I said there are other levels. Come up higher, said God. God is calling you to come up higher. Hey, my Jesus. He wants to show you great and mighty things that you do not know. And you cannot stay in the calm. You cannot stay at that place of stillness. Hallelujah. God wants to take you to a place, oh God, where he can show you the heavens, that in heaven there is no silence. In heaven there is no what silence. Brothers and sisters, four and twenty elders are bowing down day and night. They are crying, holy, holy, Lord God. Trumpets are, Jesus loves music. God loves music. There are angels that are uh, playing music. If, if music didn't start there. In, in the earth. Come on, that's who Lucifer was. Ah, he have the pipes built in him. He have the organs built in him. He have an orchestra built in him. He was a walking, talking band all by him. It was a one-man band, so to speak, in the name of Jesus. Watch this. You cannot be effective in ministry without an altar. <laughs> oh, you cannot be effective. Well, you can be effective in ministry, but you cannot be effective unto the Lord God. Let me, let me coin it that way. You cannot be effective because, you see, we can rile up man. Man will jump up and give God praise at, at, at a good singing. But it doesn't mean that that singer of an altar. It doesn't mean that the person who is singing is a praying person. Somebody hear what I'm saying to you. Hallelujah. The preacher... Because of his oratorical skill, he can, he can rile up a crowd. Yes, sir. Come on now. He knows how to speak. He's charismatic. But it doesn't mean that that preacher pray. <laughs> it doesn't mean that that preacher is Holy Ghost filled. It doesn't mean, am I talking to somebody here? It doesn't mean, blessed be God, that that preacher prayed for the past one year. For the past six months. For the, have a, 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 a deep intercessory prayer with God. What am I talking to? I, I am here to show you all the great ministers, all the great uh, gifts in the Bible, those people that turn the world upside down, what they use to turn the world upside down. Hallelujah. Come on, brethren. It was not great speech. It was not big education. Amen. It's not all good you can cross your T's and, uh, and, 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 and dot your I's. No, sir. Oh, glory be to God. Ah, my word tonight is build an altar unto the Lord. Hallelujah. You need the blessed Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, knowing the Bible is important. It's good. But a person who is, let me use this word, full of the Holy Spirit and have a personal altar, hallelujah, is more dangerous than any theologians who only, you know, those ones that are only oratorical skilled, they're skilled, as I just mentioned earlier, but they lack, are lacking the power of the Holy Ghost. You can have a PhD stand in the pulpit and the PhD can give you a good lecture, but it takes a little grade eight person. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. It didn't even finish high school, but you know what happened? They sit at the feet of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They spend time 
in prayer. I, come on, somebody here. And because they spend time in prayer, when they stand up, blinded eyes begin to open. Deaf ears pop open. What am I talking to? Sick getting healed. Somebody hear the word of God this evening. Hallelujah. Paul says in second, in First Corinthians chapter 2, Hallelujah. Uh, 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 and, and verse number four, he says, and, 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 and my speech, and my, let, me, let me read chapter two and verse one first. He said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech, of what? Wisdom of men. Come on now. I didn't come with, with ex excellence of speech. Hallelujah. Declaring the testimonies of God. But he went up in verse 4. He said, my speech and my preaching were not by persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Oh, glory be to God, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I know oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I, I just feel like I just sit in there, Pastor Taylor. Just sit right in there. Ah, oh, God. Brothers and sisters, so many people want to be frontline minister. Hallelujah. But they are void. Did you hear what I said? They are void or they are missing the main two ingredients for ministry. They are missing what? The two main ingredients for ministry. What are the two main ingredients of ministry, Pastor Taylor? The two main ingredients are, hallelujah, prayer and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what are the two main ingredients for ministry? Prayer and the Holy Spirit. How do, what example did Jesus leave for his church? Prayer and the Holy Spirit. What two main, main ingredients did Paul leave for the church? Prayer. And the Holy Spirit. What two main ingredients did Peter operate in? Prayer and the Holy Spirit. How did Elijah operate his ministry? Prayer and the Holy Spirit. How did Jeremiah operate his ministry? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Right in the chat. Lord, I need the oil. Come on now. Come on. Right in the chat. Lord, I need the oil. Hallelujah. And then you write after that. Lord, please Pour your oil, oh God, upon me. Come on now, pour out your oil. Oh, blessed be Jesus Christ. Oh, somebody's right, fill me with the blessed Holy Spirit. Put it in the chat, Lord. Fill me with the blessed Holy Spirit. Let the oil drip from somebody's head tonight. Holy Spirit of God, let the oil of the anointing drip ay, 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 oh, from somebody's head tonight, down to their skirt, down to their garment. In the name of Jesus, let it be a dripping of oil. Let when the praise worshipers go to sing, there is a dripping of oil. Let when the musicians play, there is a dripping of oil. Let when the, 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 the people in the sound booth, in media, hallelujah, with the upper red media. Let there be a dripping of oil. Let when the preacher preach, let there be a dripping of oil. Those that are in children church, those that are in daycare nursery, hallelujah, those that are in the cameras, those that are in the kitchen, uh, in the cafeteria, wherever they are in the ministry, wherever they're operating, let there be a dripping. Let oil drip God. Father, let oil, let, come on, let, let we be sliding over in that oil. Yes, let's do the moonwalk in oil in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody put oil me, God. Say, God, put oil on me in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on. I need the oil. Ay, 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 ay. Two major ingredients of ministry. You cannot stand in the pulpit and you don't pray. You cannot seek to minister and you don't seek the enabling of the Holy Ghost. Look, what are you doing, people of God? Come on now, we're calling back the church. This is a clarion call. Brethren, this is a clarion call. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare a shift. In Jesus, I declare a shift tonight. Let's all drip. 
drip. So I come and drip oil tonight. And this morning, this evening, afternoon, whatever time you'll be watching this broadcast, I decree and declare oil will drip. <laughs> Acts chapter 4. Let's, let's, let's read a few verses there. Don't know far I can get with this. God knows tonight. But I said it's part one. Ay, 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 ay. Because you see, uh, the church has gone away from the foundation. And the Bible said, if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? There are so many people that are operating in the church that is void of a prayer life. Void of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus never had one person in his leadership unless they are filled. Jesus never had one person, hallelujah, who he did not teach to pray, who they did not have to first be inducted, baptized in prayer. Hear me? Ask yourself as a leader, do you have a prayer life? Do you have an altar? <laughs> when I talk about the altar, I'm not talking about you building something in your house, okay? Okay? Jesus said to the woman at the well, listen to me, you don't have to go to Jerusalem to pray. You can pray anywhere. In your car. If you're on a boat in the, on the sea. Where, where, where are you? You're, 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 you're standing in the, in the restaurant. Wherever you are. Walking in the streets. At the bus stop. Wherever you are. Build an altar. Build an altar. You come to church to, 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 to minister. Before you step on the pulpit. Right where you are. Build an altar. Before you step on that platform to sing, build an altar. How do you expect to be effective if you don't have an altar? The Bible says, Acts chapter uh, 1, 4 through 8. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait, here it is, for the promise of the Father which he said, you have heard from me. For verse number five said, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Remember that's, it was there just after he risen, it was pointing them to Pentecost. But he said, you cannot go into ministry unless you first have an altar. You first need to build an altar and, you, and, and, and secondly, you need the Holy Spirit. You get it? So in order for you to get the Holy Spirit, you first have to be praying. You don't get the Holy Spirit first and then start praying. You pray to get the Spirit. Jesus. The Bible said, verse number six, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Verse number seven. And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the father had put in his own authority or power. But here it is. But you shall receive power. Anybody hear that? <laughs> They're talking about politics. He's talking about power. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Watch this now. You shall receive power when? When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then now you will be ready for ministry. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth or the uttermost part, as old King James says, of the earth. Did you see that? Jesus instructed them before you can be released into ministry. You first have to go learn how to pray. You first need to develop a prayer life. The church has gone away from prayer. Ministers are ministering, they're dry like. Okay, you know dry ice? I used to see they use dry ice in Jamaica, smoke, like smoke coming off it. Well, listen, listen to this here. I'm just reading a few scriptures here. I have about. Oh, God, let me use 10 minutes more. The Bible says, Matthew 3, 16 through 17. I'm reading that again. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. 
The Bible says in verse 17, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Did you see that? First thing that happened is that Jesus Christ was, before he started his ministry, he got filled with the baptism of the Holy, or the infilling. Because according to Exodus, uh, Hebrews, they were all, when they went through the Red Sea, they were all baptized in him. So there are different baptism. What I'm talking about here, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Listen here. Jump over to, I could read Matthew 4, but I want to go to St. Luke just for a word in there. Amen. St. Luke chapter 4, 1 through 4, please. Write down these scriptures. It's going to be very important for you. Hallelujah. It's going to be very important. Sister Karen Taylor, I love you. God bless you. So no more Richards. Good, good girl. Pray that your Easter was well. Here it is. St. Luke, I could, it's the same thing is uh, recorded in Matthew 4, but I'm reading Luke uh, uh, edition. Luke says, then Jesus being, listen carefully, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, with New King James Version I'm reading. Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, watch this, returned from Jordan. Returned from what? Jordan. And was, listen carefully, was led by the Spirit, where? Into the wilderness. He was led by the Spirit, where? Into the wilderness. Being tempted for 40 days. Please pay attention to this, to this reading. 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. He was what? Hungry. When the 40 days was ended, he was hungry. And the Bible says, when he got hungry, the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone, this stone to become bread. Jesus said to him, it is written, a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, Pastor Kirk, that comes from the mouth of God. Did you see that? Did you see the two major factors or key components at work in the life of Jesus? Did you see them? Hallelujah. Ah, do you see what was operating in Jesus' life as to why he could stand up to the devil? Jesus was first filled, then he went into a 40 days and 40 nights fasting. Remember, he was not yet releasing ministry to man. All right? Before, his, before Jesus started, Sister Lisa, healing the sick and casting out demons, he spent time in prayer. He spent what? Time in prayer. And not just prayer, fasting. He spent what? Time in prayer and fasting. In his case, 40 days and 40 nights. Hallelujah. He first erected an altar. Because you cannot be in ministry and you don't have an altar. When, when David's back was up against the wall, the first thing he called for, bring me the altar. Yeah, come on now, bring me the altar. Come on now, Abiathar, get into the altar. I'm going to inquire at the altar. Why do we have so many depressed Christians in the church? They have no altar. Why do we have so many people who are full of anxiety? They have no altar altar why is it when they come under attack they, uh, they, they they start losing it they have no 
halter somebody hear what i'm saying to you let, let, let me not just talk about the holy spirit yet let me just talk about your altar because why when you have an altar you go to your altar and you encourage yourself from the altar the holy spirit will inside of you will help you to pray it even if you do not have words once you find the altar and you stretch out on that altar the spirit of god will come upon you and all of a sudden words start flowing out of you that you didn't find up you did not think of those words it was not in your mind to say those words but because you found the altar because you get back to the altar hallelujah come on brothers and sisters you see jesus's life he will send away the disciples and he go and pray by himself personal altar i'm not talking about the altar in the church that's a corporate altar you must have your personal altar even in your car you spend time in your car and pray before you come to church hallelujah that's your personal altar do not wait till you come to church to erect an altar come on we come to gather around that one altar but jesus christ said guys go i'll meet you across on the other side while he goes to his altar while he goes to his personal personal altar time and time and time again in the bible you would see that he did not call anybody away from in the garden of gethsemane to help him pray otherwise he prayed by himself his personal altar when he was praying they watch him praying and they said lord teach us how to pray why he was at his altar people see you pray they will come and ask you to teach them to pray but who is asking anybody to teach them to pray who who because why ain't nobody praying Ain't nobody praying that you that you are impacting lives. There's no sound effect. There's no sound. People praying that you can't even hear a word coming out of their mouth. There's no sound effect. On the day of Pentecost, there was sound effect. Hallelujah. Somebody hear what I'm saying? It's just spread abroad they were speaking with new tongues glory be to god the prayers was not silent hallelujah i said the prayers at pentecost was not silent it was loud oh god almighty it was a, there was a sound the sound was replicated brothers and sisters hear the word of god there's a sound when are we going to hear some prayers that people over there can hear a prayer being prayed that someone over the yonder can hear a prayer being prayed when there's going to be a sound in the house of god when are we going to hear god's people make a sound everybody go and then whisper whisper in the whole little way come on somebody i it's pentecost in operation and now there got to be a sound there got to be a sound god is waiting for his church to make a sound holy spirit step down in this room tonight in the mighty name of jesus christ oh glory be to god before jesus ministry began watch this let me just make this point and close before his ministry began friends boko raman they say yeah he first Ale, watch this he was not led into ministry to heal the sick, <laughs> raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. No, no, no. The Bible said he returned from the Jordan, being full of the Holy Ghost, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Hallelujah. Into the wilderness you gotta get it <laughs> watch this he was led how let me read it let me read it again to you because <laughs> you got to be careful oh yeah <laughs> he was led by the spirit in the in the wilderness it did not said to be tempted Let me pause for a few seconds. The Bible did not say Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted, Pastor Howard. He was led by the Spirit in to the wilderness. Why, Pastor Taylor? Because God wanted Jesus to have a wilderness experience just like the children of Israel. He was not led into the wilderness to be tempted. God don't lead nobody into temptation. 
Jesus said, when we pray to the Father, we must pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So God would go back on his word and the entire universe would collapse if one of God's word turned out to be a lie. If God said something and then turns back on what he says. So Jesus being led in the wilderness was not to be tempted by the devil. But here's the kicker. <laughs> here's the kicker. The devil is an opportunist. Did you hear what I just said? Satan is an opportunist. An opportunist is one who exploits circumstances to gain advantage. So here it is. Jesus was kind of walking through. Because the Bible says, we'll get there. We'll get there. But I, I, I got to do this point that, you, that it comes home to you. What, what the children of Israel went through and failed, Jesus had to also walk that same journey. So the journey of the wilderness was not for Jesus that the Spirit led him into Satan's hands. No. What took place in, in the wilderness was a replica of what the children of Israel went through. Get it? God did not lead him there. Satan just saw that this man has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He was now hungry. He now have a need. Satan will attack you when you have a need. Jesus Christ. He's an opportunist. Oh, God. Oh, no, no. oh no, Jesus. God Almighty, Jesus. God will test you like he did with Abraham. But God will not tempt you. God is not evil. He delivers from evil. <laughs> he what? Delivers from evil. The Bible says, friends, why, why did Jesus went into the wilderness? Hebrews 4.15. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. Let me read it from the Amplified. I read it from the King James. King James first and read from the Amplified. Hebrews 4, 15, Pastor Howard. For we do not have an high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Can I read it from the Amplified now? The Amplified said, For we do not have an high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses. Get that? And not only our weaknesses and temptations, but one who has been tempted, knowing exactly how it feels to be human. Why did Jesus went in the wilderness? To know what it feels like to be human. And Satan capitalized on the opportunity. Hallelujah. But the Bible says he knows what it feels like to be human in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop. I'll, I'll pick it up next, next time at Acts 2 because I really want to let you know. Breth brothers and sisters, the, the last gift that God did, I, I pray that I'll be able to begin on this point next, next time. The last gift that God gave the church away from salvation is the gift of the Holy Ghost. The last gift that was given to man, to mankind, was when Jesus said, go wait, Acts chapter 1, go wait for the promise of the Father. Why did he wait? It? Why weren't you born with that? Gifts and calling are without repentance. But this one gift, Mm -hmm. This one gift, gift, the infilling, the empowering of the Holy Spirit, that one gift can be taken back. That one is not a gift without repentance. You get it? Not taking back your, the, the, the gift that I give your salvation. The gift 
that you use. That's why some people are operating as witches and warlocks because they once have the power. What God took back from Saul was one gift that can be taken back, the anointing. Saul was a king, but he lost the anointing. You cannot, somebody hear what I'm saying to you. You can, David pray this one prayer in Psalm 51. I think it's verse four someplace there. I'm winging it. Verse four or five. He said, cast me not away from your presence, O God. Here it is. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Why? David says that. Because he knows that Saul lost his anointing. And that one area of salvation that you can lose, the power. The power. The power. So there's a lot of people that are walking around who once had the power, H-A-D, but they gamble and they lost. I said, they what? They gamble. I got to stop here. Holy Spirit tonight. Hey, help your people to get back to build an altar. Everyone online need an altar. You don't come to church unless you first go to your altar. Don't step up on the pulpit to sing, do anything without you having an altar. How can you be effective? How can there be fire? How can you come on, Mate Talasa? How can you say, Satan, get behind me? How can you do that? That comes from an altar. That comes from a prayer life. That comes from someone who is praying earnestly. I got to stop. Minister Lisa, take it from there, please. Or Althea, I don't know. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Build me an altar. Thank you so much, Apostle. Um, you started off. Let me just repeat the topic for those of you who did not hear it. Powered by the Holy Ghost, build an altar. An altar Jesus. is so important. And you know, Bishop, you were speaking about a sound. And I love how you affirmed Minister Lisa, because when she speaks and she releases that sound, you can tell that she has an altar. You know, you can tell when people speak, if they have a prayer life, if they're in God, if they're communicating, building That's a right. relationship with God. You That's said right. there are two major factors, you know, or key components yes, of effective ministry, you know, Build an altar. You said you cannot mm -hmm. get the Holy Spirit without praying. An altar right. is a prayer life. You know, and when you have a prayer life, when you invite the Holy Spirit in, that is when he comes in. You know, the word of God says, do not be anxious for anything, but in Aye. prayer, with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known. He said, whatever we ask in prayer, he is faithful. We will receive it from him. I love what you said. The Holy Spirit is the last gift given. Yes. To man, he said, yes. likewise, why do we need the Holy Spirit? The word of God says, likewise, it is the spirit that helps us with our weaknesses. You know, I love the wilderness um, explanation. You said the enemy only comes for an opportunity when we have a need. He said the yes. spirit helps our weaknesses for we do not know yes. what to yes. pray, but it is the Holy Spirit that helps us in time of prayer. You know, Hallelujah. it says when you pray, go into your room. Your altar is not built publicly. Your altar right. is something that is, is personal. Right. It is yes. between you and God when you go into that closet and you pray and you receive the fire of the Holy Spirit. The word of God says men are to always pray and not mm. faint. Oh my gosh, this prayer has been on my heart for the last few. I mean, I've been speaking to people about prayer. I've been sending out invitations for prayer. And if we notice, we are struggling because we are not praying. We are not communicating Amen. with our Amen. Father. We're not able. How can we say that we can try a spirit? The word of yes. God says, Try the spirit. How do we yes. know who is speaking in our spirit if we are not able to try the spirit? And when can you try the spirit? When you have the Holy Spirit, it is the Holy Spirit in us that helps yes. us to try the spirit. I'm not going to go far. You know why? The preacher was affirmed tonight and I want to hear the preacher. So, Minister Lisa, 
I, I am in so much agreement with Bishop because when Minister Lisa speaks, I am telling you, the sound, we are sending out a sound to an audience that wants to hear our mm -hmm. voice. Minister Lisa, I see your hand, Minister Nadia, but I'm going to let the speakers, Miss, Madam Speaker, please go ahead. Oh, praise the Lord. Bishop, I, I thank you for this word powered by the Holy Ghost because we know that the Holy Ghost is a person. He is yes. our greatest teacher and we cannot do anything without the Holy Spirit. Mighty mm. God, Bishop, it, it, he's the third person in the Godhead, but you said something powerful tonight. He is the last gift that was given to mankind. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he was ascending, he said he will give us the comforter and the comforter is going to live in us. He's the one that is going to empower us that when we have the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside, there's nothing that can stop us. You said tonight a lot of things, almighty oh God, that I just want to reiterate. You said that there are two major factors for effective ministry. And one is to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and having a prayer life, a personal altar. How can yes. we ever be effective without the Holy Spirit? We are nothing without the Holy Spirit. The, Jesus said, you know, go into the upper room, go and wait for the promise. Amen. Wait for the promise. So he, he left an instruction to the Don't people, go anywhere. To his disciples, go yep. and wait. Mm -hmm. And when they followed his instructions, they went mm -hmm. into the upper room. The Holy Spirit came in like a rushing mighty wind. They were all in one accord. And this is the thing, being in one accord, being in a, you know, together praying Praying, when you come together, and this is why, Bishop, the word of God says, iron sharpened iron. When we yes, come together, one shall chase a thousand, but two shall put 10,000 to flight. Because when we come in one accord, oh God, and the Holy Spirit sits upon us, great mm. and mighty things will happen. There's no asking, no questions. Something must happen. You say Hallelujah. it another time, and we say it as a cliche, a closed mouth will mm. never be fed. We right. have to make a sound. There must be some form of interaction. There must be yes. some form of cooperation. We have to come together and open our mouth and make a sound. And so mm -hmm. many times, you know, you would ask people to pray and we, people get nervous and people shake, but you know, we have to get to that place where we forget about ourselves, mighty Thank God. You, Jesus. We have to get about ourselves and just focus on God. Let him be the one that is going to lead us and guide us. You, you even broke it down tonight. You talked about sound. You said sound travels. It yes. gives an effect. It is yeah. encompassing. It is all around. It is yeah. wide ranging. It is yes. thorough, methodical, yeah. in, and it's in depth. We yes. must open our um, mouth and make a sound. And yeah. when we, oh, God, Jesus, you know, in, in Jeremiah, he said, don't be afraid. When you open your mouth, I will put my words in your mouth. So let us not think about what we are going to say. Let us not think about ourselves because My Jesus, God. he is our savior. He is the one that is leading us. The Holy Spirit is the one. He is the driver. He is the one that will lead you into all truth. He will put Hallelujah. the words in your mouth, whatever you need to say. If you are praying and have a prayer life, he will fill you up. Almighty God, you said mm. two main ingredients for ministry is prayer prayer and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Don't miss that one tonight, people mm -hmm. of God. Don't miss that. The two main ingredients, yes. prayer and the Holy Spirit. And how do you get the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. It's by praying, praying. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. Abraham, when he was told to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, he didn't see the, the sacrifice, but he followed the instruction. 
That's mm -hmm. the main, one of the main things is following first the instruction. And after the ram was presented, there was a ram in the ticket. And what yes. did he do after that? He built an altar. Mm -hmm. He built an altar and that altar is God, Jesus. God is my provider. He built an yes. altar everywhere in the Bible. There was yes. an altar. Hannah, when she mm -hmm. wanted a child, she an built an altar. She prayed. Yes, she yes, prayed ma until that came, yes. that, that, that promise came to her. Alter. And so Alter. it is so important. Go ahead, Bishop. Sorry, I'm not here. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. I said it's an altar. Yes. The, most of God's people don't have a altar anymore. That's right. Most, all all most people, most people don't That's have an altar. Dish. There's no altar anywhere. You can uh, oh, let them open their mouth and speak. And you know that, oh, please sit down. You ain't, got, you ain't got a altar. You're not coming from nowhere. You're dry. You're, you didn't spend no time praying this week. You're, you're dry. You're empty. You're empty. We must try spirit, friends. If you have the, the Holy Spirit, you can, someone can open them out and say, you know what happened? Please. All right? Because there's no leaping. There's no leaping. There's no connection. There's no connection. Hallelujah. Iron sharpens iron. Oh, when you have the, the spirit. And someone with the spirit, and you begin to speak, there's a leaping going on. Something changing, atmosphere shift. Glory be to God. When Holy Ghost people start talking, you don't need a whole lot of words. You don't need a guy coming with this letter talking, talking, and ain't no, nothing happening. He talks and he he try to uh, use words that he himself doesn't understand the hell that I'm talking about. Amen. But one person go up there and open their mouth and said, let us praise the Lord. Let us give God thanks. And out of that, oh, the fire fall. By just saying, let us worship the Lord. You can hear, hallelujah, something triggers, something move the hands of God, hallelujah. You hear that theologian go up there talking a whole lot of foolishness, hallelujah. And one person just go up there and said, let us lift up the name of the Lord Jesus for there is power in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden things start to break all around you. Hallelujah. Demons start to scream out and come out of people. Why? For there is an altar and the Holy Ghost is in operation. Oh God, I pray that everyone online will start believing God for the Holy Spirit. We start to believe in God for another level. God, give me another touch. Lord, give me another touch of the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me up. If you've been Feel before some of you come on now. You need a brand new bottle for this brand new wine. Hallelujah. You need to ask God, Lord, I'm thirsty. As the art hunted after the water brooks, oh God, so my soul thirst after thee. And he said, He that do hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. How come God's people are not hungry? Hallelujah for the Holy Ghost. How come you're not hungry? Hallelujah for the in filling up of the spirit of God. We are Pentecostal friends. We are not Catholics. We are Pentecostal. We operate by the Come on now, by the power. We don't come with excellency of speech. We come up with demonstration. Come on, cancer to dry up. Hallelujah. Come on, blinded eyes to heal. Come on, demons to run away out of people. In the name of Jesus Christ, bind up forces of darkness. Send back witchcraft to its workers. In the name of Jesus. That's why the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. Yes, it is. Oh God, please, Lord, pour out your oil. Please, Jesus, please. Finish your thought and let Kishana say what you're saying and we, 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 we close off. Go ahead, Kishana. Mm -hmm. We just want to ask oh. God to pour in the oil and the wine. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Lord Amen. Jesus, tonight, Jesus. let somebody be hungry tonight, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. God Almighty, let someone, let, let them not leave this line. Hallelujah. With the same Focus. Let them start to God. I need more of you. Lord, my prayer life has gone down. Lord, I don't even know where to find my altar. It's right where you are. Right where you're standing. The thief, the thief, his altar was on the cross. The thief altar was him hanging on the cross. Looking across at the power and said, <laughs> oh. he said to the power, yeah, Lord, <laughs> Lord, you see me over here? I'm guilty for what I've done. But you, 
you're innocent. Remember me. That was his altar. What was his prayer? Remember me. Hallelujah. When the comments into that kingdom. Today, his prayer was answered immediately. Where was his altar? Right on the cross. Can you imagine that? Nails in his hands. Nails in his feet. But he made the cross an altar. What are you going through? Whatever you're going through tonight, make it an altar. You, you, you want to see? You, you, want, you want a break? Make, uh, I, come on. Are you struggling? Hallelujah. In your marriage? Make it an altar. Are you struggling in your finances? Make it an altar. Whatever pain you're in tonight, like the thief on the cross, make it an altar. Jesus, use the cross and make it an My God! My God! Over Kito, why? It was out an altar. He, come on. He's, he's showing us in whatever situation you're in, you can make an altar. What Whatever you are going through, you can still pray in deep agony. He used the occasion to pray. He used the occasion to call on the Father. Why? Because he was he was what powered by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost never left him, never ever leave him. I mean, that when he went into the grave, the Bible said, "If the Spirit of Him, oh glory be to God, that raised Jesus from the dead, the Holy Spirit never." Never left him because he said i will never leave you nor forsake you he said come on if the spirit of him that raised christ from the dead dwells in you that same spirit shall quicken bring alive your mortal body the mortal jesus that was in the grave because it was empowered by the spirit he got to get up he's got to get up if the spirit of god inside of you whatever satan is trying to use to hold you down can't hold you i decree in the name of Jesus, uh, you're getting up out of it, uh, you're rising out of it. Uh, in the come, I say you're coming back from out of it. Hallelujah. Paul, and you coming out of it in the name of Jesus. Somebody need to give God praise. Somebody need to give God glory. Why? Because the spirit of God, the anointing, and because Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross. Uh, it's somebody, you know what I'm saying? The two main ingredients. Uh, prayer, Jesus spent time in prayer. And the Holy Ghost who never left him, come take him up out of death. Uh, I'm decreeing, friends, if you're praying, whatever you're going through right now, you'll come out of it. I said, you will come out of it. I said, God will get you out of it. Oh, God. For the effectual fervent prayer. Woo! Uh, we're, we're way over time. Do a question and, and let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Ooh, we're way over time. Bishop, you covered mm. it. You covered it. it Hallelujah, today. Jesus. Lama Satan Lama is an Lama opportunist. Yes, and the church is. is in need of yep, prayer. That's, that's right. That's why we're under attack. Because right. the devil sees the opportunities. Yep. That's mm. right now. We're all lacking in prayer. That's right. Thank you, Bishop. Yes. Thank you. While Bishop. Jesus, while Jesus was going through the wilderness, didn't eat, and he was going through the wilderness. Satan waited for because he, after, he could not release in ministry. Jesus's ministry did not started with him turning water into wine. That was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Jesus' ministry did not begin, brothers and sisters, with him opening blinded eyes. It did not begin with him. Casting out demons. It did not begin with Jesus Christ raising the dead. That's not the way Jesus' ministry begins. Jesus' ministry began at the Jordan. When the Holy Spirit alighted on him. And from there, he was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. That's where his ministry started in wilderness. Some of you are going through some wilderness experiences now. Because God is about to release you into ministry. But you are crying the blues, not understanding that you are on training ground. He, he, he Before Jesus Christ could, he, could raise a dead, somebody wants me. He first have to go through the wilderness. He first have to learn what wilderness is all about. He first have to learn what prayer, intercession is all about. Look at some of you, but you're in ministry. When was the last time? You cry out for the in feeling of it. I see guys out there thumping Bible, and they, they don't even they don't even feel. <laughs> I hear they speaking some demon tongues, and I want to tell them shut your mouth because you're irritating me. 
Because the tongue that you're trying to speak is not of God. You're trying to make up something for people to think. And ask them to pray two minutes in tongues. They will never be able to do it. They will be able to say, Rakamobo, and they're done. Can't say another word. Can't make 10 sentences. That's how you know that a person is not filled. If you're not able to pray in tongues, Makota Sabaha, Rimokota Labande Kete. Don't let nobody fool you in this hour. Do not allow anyone to fool you, but them feel. Ask you, you feel with tongues. Pray, pray for five minutes in tongues. I said five, not ten. You all see me. You come to church and you'll see me praying in tongues some an hour, stuff like that. Let's ask some of these ones who talk about they feel with the Holy Spirit. Ask them to pray in tongues, only tongues, for five minutes, and you will see the embarrassment. Do try the spirit. See if it is of God, because many false prophets, false apostles, has gone out there. Nadia, we'll do you another time. I, I, my time is done. Congratulations for your license. Take that and run with it. Amen. I don't want this to go too long. We're 16 minutes uh, over the hour, and and so I want it. I want it. I want to finish here. I I, I I hope you take it with grace. I just believe that this is enough, and I don't want anything else in this. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want this word to sit where it's at. I want you, Nadia, to go get an altar. I want everybody to go build an altar. You know what I'm saying to you? When you come to church Sunday, everybody must have an altar. Everybody come up, must have an altar. In the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, I decree and I declare over these year waves that allow your oil to pour. They, uh, those who are vessels, those who are vessels tonight, let them turn them up in Jesus' name. For there is an outpouring right now. Jesus, you desire Jesus. to fill your people. You desire to Master fill your people. Today. Oh God, let your people get hungry. Let your people Master get hungry. Bro. Let your people get thirsty. Oh God, Master let them be a thirst. Let them be a mm. thirst on the inside. Let them be a thirst mm. on the inside. Spirit of the living Master God. Today. Let your people yeah. not be satisfied. Yeah. Let your people not be satisfied yeah. with where they are. You want to God to be evil, not conformed to this world, but be evil, transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good, faithful, and acceptable will of God. The will of God is for you, hallelujah, to be carrying the power, for you to be carrying the power, for you to be, I give you power over all the power of the devil, and nothing shall by any means means earth your God I pray for the enforcer's power I pray for the enforcer's power to come upon thy people oh Jesus. God tonight this morning afternoon evening whatever time they're watching let the enforcer's power come upon your people that they might do great exploits in your mighty name I give Hallelujah. you everything I want to thank you all Jesus thank you for watching tonight thank you for your time Minister Lisa, Minister Althea, Minister Kishana, Apostle Bird, love you so much. God bless you, all of you. Heaven smile on you. Shalom, Jesus. King. Jesus. Thank you, Bishop. Good night. Thank, Thank you, Doctor. Bye, God. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. 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 Thank